Neutrophil extracellular traps, or NETs, are a recently identified mechanism for neutrophil-mediated clearance of pathogens. By releasing a combination of cytoplasmic and granule proteins, as well as chromatin, neutrophils form extracellular fibres that trap pathogens. In this video, granulocytes are isolated from human whole blood by histopaque density gradient centrifugation. Neutrophils are isolated from the granulocyte preparation by percol gradient centrifugation, seeded onto cover glass and stimulated to form nets using chemical or biological stimuli. The cells are then processed for immunolabeling or EM for visualization of nets. Hi, I'm Christian Grossmann from the Microscopy Core Facility at the Max Planck Institute for Infection Biology. Today we will show you a procedure to purify neutrophil granulocytes from human blood and stimulate them to generate neutrophil extracellular traps or nets. We will then visualize nets by immunofluorescence and scanning electron microscopy. We use this procedure in our lab to study the mechanisms that lead to net formation and to analyze the antimicrobial properties of nets. So, Let's get started. Begin this protocol in a laminar flow hood by pipetting 6 milliliters of histopaque 1119 into each of 4 to 15 milliliter falcon tubes. Carefully lay a 5 to 7 milliliters of whole blood over the histopaque in each tube. Centrifuge the tubes for 20 minutes at about 800 times G, ensuring that the break is off. Once the centrifugation has completed, carefully remove the tubes from the centrifuge. The tube will contain four clearly separated layers. From top to bottom, these are a dark red layer containing erythrocytes, a light red layer containing the neutrophil granulocytes with some erythrocytes, a whitish yellow layer containing leukocytes and serum, and a clear yellow layer of serum. Again, working in the laminar flow hood, use a pipette attached to a vacuum system to carefully aspirate the top yellow layer. Then, using a pipette, transfer the reddish phase containing granulocytes from each tube into a new falcon tube. Next, fill the tubes with PBS to wash the granulocytes then pellet them by centrifugation for 10 minutes at about 300 times G. While the cells are spinning, prepare a 100% percol solution by mixing 18 milliliters of percol with 2 milliliters of 10 times PBS. Then, use the 100% percol solution and 1 times PBS to prepare 4 milliliters each of 65, 70, 75, 80 and 85% percol. Use these solutions to prepare percol gradients by carefully layering 2 ml of each solution into each of two tubes. Begin by pipetting 2 ml of the 85% solution into each tube. Then, on top of the 85% percol, carefully layer 2 ml of the 80% percol. Continue layering 2 ml of each solution in decreasing order such that the 65% solution is layered on top. Remove the sedimented leukocytes from the centrifuge. Under the hood, discard the supernatant and resuspend the cells in 1 ml of PBS. Then, combine the resuspended cells in a fresh tube. Carefully layer 2 ml of the resuspended granulocytes onto each of the percol gradients. Then, centrifuge for 20 minutes at about 800 times G, ensuring that the break is off. After centrifugation, the interfaces should be clearly visible due to the higher cell density. Discard the top layer and most of the 65% layer, which contain peripheral blood mononuclear cells, or PBMCs. Collect the 65%-70% interphase together with the 70%-75% and 80%-85% interphase from each gradient and transfer them to new fresh falcon tubes. Wash the cells by filling the tube with PBS and centrifuge for 10 minutes at about 300 times G to pellet the cells. After centrifugation, remove the supernatant and resuspend the sedimented polymorphonuclear leukocytes or PMNs in 2 ml of PBS. At this point, 
95% or more of the cells in the preparation will be PMNs. Using a hemocytometer determines cell counts, then seed 200,000 cells in 500 microliters of RPMI onto sterile round cover slips placed in culture plates with 15 millimeter size wells. Incubate for one hour in a 5% CO2 incubator at 37 degrees Celsius to allow the cells to attach to the cover slips. After one hour, add 100 microliters of RPMI containing the desired stimulant. For a time course experiment, add the stimulant sequentially, starting with the longest stimulation time. For each conditional time point, be sure to prepare a positive control by adding 600 nanomolars of PMA in RPMI. Also for each condition or time point, prepare a negative control by adding RPMI alone. Incubate for up to four hours in a CO2 incubator at 37 degrees Celsius. During stimulation, the formation of nets can be monitored using bright field microscopy. Shortly after stimulation, nuclei change their form dramatically. They lose their lobules, round up, then expand. At the desired time point, add 600 microliters of room temperature 8% paraformaldehyde solution to each well to bring the final concentration to 4%. Incubate for 2 to 4 hours. For immunolabeling, place a parafilm sheet on top of a test tube rack with 3 times 8 boreholes of approximately 15 mm diameter to form wells. Fill wells with PBS. Use a curved needle to lift up each of the cover slips from the paraformaldehyde on the culture plate. Then, using forceps, grasp the cover slip and invert it onto the surface of a drop of PBS on the parafilm. At this point, neutrophil extracellular traps are very fragile and great care should be taken during manipulation to avoid cell loss. After five minutes, repeat the wash by transferring the cover slips to new drops of PBS. Repeat for a total of three washes. Next, transfer the cover slips to a drop of room temperature 0.5% Triton X100 for one minute to permeabilize the cells. Then wash three times in PBS for one minute each. Following the wash, proceed with the staining according to the accompanying written protocol, performing each of the incubations and wash steps by inverting the cover glass on the parafilm. Once the cells have been stained, place a 20 microliter drop of mobile onto a glass slide and mount the cover slips face down, with the cells between the cover slip and the slide. After one hour, the mobile should have solidified and the cells are ready for microscopic analysis with immersion lenses. Prepare the cells for scanning electron microscopy under a chemical fume hood. Post fix the cells on the glass cover slips in a 24 well plate with 2.5% glutaraldehyde in PBS for 30 minutes. During the incubation, place a parafilm sheet on top of a test tube stand with 3 times 8 boreholes of approximately 15 mm diameter to form wells. Fill the wells with distilled water. Use a curved needle to lift up each of the cover slips from the glutaraldehyde solution. Then, using forceps, grasp the cover slip and transfer it to a drop of distilled water on the parafilm. Wash by transferring the cover slips to drops of distilled water on parafilm. Repeat for a total of three washes, five minutes each. Transfer cover slips back into the wells of the cell culture plate containing 0.5% osmium tetroxide in distilled water and incubate for 30 minutes at room temperature. Remove the cover slips from the plate and wash three times in distilled water as before. Then return them to the 24 well plate with 0.5 milliliters of 1% tannic acid in each well and incubate for 30 minutes. Next, wash the cover slips three times, five minutes each. Then repeat the fixation with osmium tetroxide and the wash. Next, cover the test tube stand with a new piece of parafilm. Dehydrate the cells through a series of incubations in the following ethanol solutions for 5 minutes each. 30, 50, 70, 80, 90, 100, 100 and finally one more time in 100% ethanol. 
Submerge the rack in an ethanol filled specimen boat. Quickly place the cover slips into the metal rack, making sure that the specimens do not dry out. Then transfer the specimen boat into a cooled critical point dryer, or CPD. Fill the chamber of the CPD with liquid CO2. Leave the inlet valve fully open to maintain liquid level, and as soon as a phase of ethanol is visible under the CO2 phase on the bottom of the chamber, open the drain valve at the bottom to remove most of the ethanol. Allow the chamber to flush for about 30 minutes. After flushing, close the inlet valve and lower the liquid level to just below the top of the boat. Run hot water through the jacket of the CPD. When the temperature reaches 36 to 38 degrees Celsius and the pressure rises to 1,200 pounds per square inch, the liquid gas boundary line will disappear and the specimens will be above critical point. Once the critical point has been reached, vent the gas off slowly over a five minute period to avoid condensation. The temperature should remain around 40 degrees Celsius during this time. Open the door and remove the boat. Confirm that the dehydrating solvent has evaporated. Stick the cover slips right side up to the adhesive on the aluminium specimen holder and transfer them into the high resolution coating system. Evacuate the coating cylinder to 2 times 10 to the minus 5 millibars. Then set the instrument to 1.8 kilovolts and 70 milliamps and monitor the thickness of the plate and carbon layer with a quartz crystal thickness monitor until the layer reaches 5 nanometers. Vent the coating cylinder of the high resolution coating system. Then, using forceps, remove the samples from the coater. Bring the chamber of the SEM to normal pressure. Open the door, then insert the samples into the specimen holder and evacuate the chamber for SEM analysis. When fixed at different time points after stimulation, morphological changes during netosis can be observed by immunofluorescence microscopy. In this figure, the DNA is shown in blue, histon DNA complex is shown in red, and neutrophil elastase, a granule marker, is shown in green. During the first phase of netosis, only the nuclear periphery in condensed nuclei is stained. Later, when the chromatin is more decondensed, most of the nucleus is stained. In the decondensed nets, staining is homogeneous. This panel of images details the overlap of nuclear and granular staining that occurs with netosis. This scanning electron micrograph shows non-stimulated neutrophils. After stimulation with Shigella bacterium, the neutrophils flatten out and produce neutrophil extracellular traps. Here, a Shigella bacterium has been trapped in nets. Bacteria, such as Shigella, are immobilized and killed by the enzymes present in nets. We've just shown you how to isolate neutrophil granulocytes from human blood and to stimulate them in order to induce formation of neutrophil extracellular traps. These can then be further analyzed by immunofluorescence or scanning electron microscopy. When doing this procedure, it is important to remember that nets are very fragile, even after fixation. In order to minimize loss of nets, we take the cover slips with the stimulated neutrophils from the well cavities and do most of the procedure on the surface of buffer drops on parafilm. Even then, it's important to move the specimens gently and slowly. So, that's it. Thanks for watching and good luck with your experiments.